God good tonight? Amen. Amen. We stand up and give us some praise tonight. Yeah. with something. Can we do something together? Yes. If we, even if it's cheesy, can we do something together? Yeah. yeah. I want you guys to repeat after me, not the first time because you don't know what it is. So I have to tell you what it is first. Okay. Ready? Ready. He, has the, he has the supply. We yes. must apply. He has the supply. We must apply. He has the supply. He has the we must apply. We must apply. Alright, so you may be seated. <laughs> Do you know that you cannot get a job, get a promotion, get your taxes back, get a car, get a home, a gift from God, a position of authority? You cannot get good grades, credit cards, government funds. A tattoo unless you apply the ink. A boyfriend, a girlfriend, marriage, or engaged unless you ask them. Eating without cooking is just not feasible. You can microwave it, of course, but somehow you've got to do something. You've got to apply something to get something out of it. How many would say that? Amen. I'm still out of breath. That's what package food is for. What's that? That's what package food is for. Like chips. It can't be cold, it can't be hot unless you do something to make it cold or hot. Amen? Amen. You've got to apply it. Woo. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to apply it, right? Yeah. you got to do something to get something. Amen? Yeah. So church, yeah. you can't find Jesus unless you push in, unless you apply something in your life. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Apply something. I need something new. I need to apply something. I need Jesus. I need to apply. He's right here and he's talking to you saying, please apply. Please give your heart to me. Please give it up. Please let me do something. Please let me apply a non sinful life. Amen? Let me apply it. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. God's good. So, you guys remember the saying, or anybody remember the saying? We must apply. We Alright, so, first scripture, how many are ready for that? We're ready. We're ready. have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Let's read it together. Can we do that? Yeah. All right. Ready from the top. I'm going to go wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Right. You guys ready? <laughs> this has got to be together or we're going to keep reading until we get it. <laughs> One, three. One, two, three. Go. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs Who gives you it? Who gives you Jesus? Jesus. Do you have everything? 
everything you need? Yes. yes. Do you? No. No. Don't have everything you need in Christ Jesus? Yes. 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 All right, the answer is yes. Ready? Yes. All right, you ready for this? Do you have all you need in Christ Jesus? Yes. yes. Wow, I'm in the right church. <laughs> what you need to do what with it? Oh, you guys stinking good. What do you got to do, Brett? Hold on, Brett. I know you've been wanting to do this. <laughs> apply. Apply. You need to apply it. Apply it. Apply it. Apply it. Apply it. Don't break it. <laughs> if you really learn on this, I am giving it to you. You will break it. <laughs> apply it. We need to apply. Apply what? As I said, you can't get alone without applying. You ain't going to know if you're going to get turned down like I would right now. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. How many would say, I've applied for loans and didn't get them? Me. I went for car loans and I didn't get them. Me. I am poor beyond means. Me. Yeah. But with God, you're not poor. You have everything you need. Amen. It's better than any 401k. Somebody say amen. amen. It's better than any job you've ever had. Amen. You never have to worry about the friend you have that works with you because he's always there, he's always with you and for you, Amen. not against Amen. you, trying to climb the ladder. Amen. Because we applied and we said, I feel the application of God, I believe in you, come into my heart, work in me, make me new. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm not ready for the next scripture, but I just have to do this again. <laughs> Don't put the scripture up there yet. This is pretty good. This is this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Another glitch. Maybe. There we go. All right, let's go to the next scripture. I'll push it again. Next scripture. Give me a fast ring. Hey, there's the glitch in the wire. Perfect glitch. I think I'm going to do it. You got a wire shortage. There's a glitch in the wire. Stop getting excited. One, two, three. Chad Lee. Uh, Party John, 14, 10 through 14. You got good eyes? Nick? Okay. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe life. Me. Me. <laughs> or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. The answer prayer. Most assuredly, I say to you. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. 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 Now, I want to hear a paraphrase, keep up the language. Yes. Here's what it's saying. It's saying, if you apply... His word, and you ask it in his name, he'll answer it. Amen? Amen. He's also telling us, each one of you, whether you're standing or sitting tonight, he's telling you the greater works you will do than even he did. Is that what it just said? Yes. It means we apply. We got the job. We accept it. Now we've got a mission to do. There's greater works that you can do, Robert. There's greater works than that Keith can do, and that we can do together as a body of Christ. There's greater things we can do because we have the power. Amen. We have the ability. And God has called us by name. He's called us. That's right. Bruce Lee. I'm going to know who Bruce Lee is. Oh, yeah. Bruce Lee. I love this saying. Who said duh? I thought you said duh. Listen to what Bruce Lee said. It actually wasn't for Bruce Lee. It was quoted from Johanna Wolfgang von Gantia. 
<laughs> the Bruce Lee used, and it basically it says this, knowing is not enough, we must apply it. Willing is not enough, we must do it. As believers, we need to get out of the boat. Amen, Deanna? We need to get out of the boat. We need to start doing. And we need to get up off of our lazy bums and start doing being who Christ called us to be. Amen? Amen. <laughs> he has the supply. We must supply. It's really cheesy. I know. I wrote it. <laughs> but you have to apply Jesus in all things. There's so many gifts that God has for us. There's so many things that God wants to do through us. God has given us the gift of hospitality, leadership, discernment, knowledge, teaching, being an apostle, being a preacher, being a teacher, being an evangelist, being a prophet. I said some of those twice. What? Twice? What? Twice. I said some of those twice. Amen? <laughs> Miracles, mercy, healing. These are all gifts God's already given us. It says it in His Word. I'm not making these up. Healing His gifts, love, grace, peace, wisdom, His Holy Spirit, communion with Him. Prayer, His Word, joy. I'm getting there. <laughs> Faith, giving, service, exhortation, living for Him. The splendor and awe of knowing that you're a Christian and you're a believer should be enough for you to apply what God's Word tells us. There's no rebuke tonight. It's all about what God's already done. There's no me telling you that you're a sinner and you need Jesus. That's, of course, we all know that. We need to start applying God's Word before we sin, during sin and after sin. Why? Because that's called repentance. Turning away from. Apply. 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 Who wants to take this home? Oh, okay. <laughs> after service. It's all yours. Apply. Thank you. Pushing down on our own heads, applying and saying, God, I need your Word. I need to break down and even just pray. Some of us we were talking about last week, which by the way, that message last week, I gotta be honest, I didn't apply. So, I'm saying to you, I will never do that again, praise God. Thank you. Some of you cheered. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> apply! If he has the supply, we need to apply, amen? Amen. Why do we live without God in everything that we do? Why do we do that? We don't apply him. We don't apply him at all. We've been talking a long time since we've been at church about how we need to apply God in every aspect of, of our lives. It's not just a weekend thing. It's not just a Friday thing. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's not just a Monday thing. It's 7-Eleven, 24-7. As I've said before, some of you laughed at this. I'm not trying to get you laugh. It's better than any Slurpee that 7-Eleven's got. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many is this word for tonight? Amen? Oh. If God's got it, as we've been saying, if God's got the supply and all we need to do is apply, if God's got everything that we're doing and already knows it, then why aren't we applying it? Why aren't we applying God's word more to our lives? Say that nice and loud. Because it's so much easier to believe the lies of the enemy in this world. Absolutely. And because I we let pride. our humanity get to us. <laughs> What's that? Because we let humanity take over. Let humanity take it's over? It's flesh. How long have you believed? Give me some time. How long have you been a believer today? 20 years. 20 years. Just a question off the top of my head. You have 20 years of Jesus inside of you to apply what you need to make it through this world, to make it through this life. Or is there more that you need to apply? A bunch. I need it. I need more every day. Amen. I need more every day. God, give me the strength to be able to make it through today. What is that? That's applying it. God, I'm heading into unfamiliar ground. I'm heading into sinful ground. I need you to cover me. Put a hedge of protection around me. Don't let me fall for the enemy's tricks. Keep me steady on the rock. Keep me steady. <coughs> Rolling with you. That's not really cheesy. Keep me going. Keep me doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just going to pace for a little bit. You look like a real preacher and pace back and forth. Is that okay? <laughs> All right. 
That's what you feel like. How many would say, well, wow. Learn makes you feel good. You uh-huh. should have said that. You should have applied more. <laughs> Ouch. Your lump? Your lump. Yeah. Your lump. Get you off track? Oh my, that was good. Freudian slip there. Your life is empty without Jesus. Amen. He is the solution to everything. Yes. Every problem, every circumstance, every war, every argument, every disease, every sin. We need to apply because guess what? He has the skill to be able to get you through it, but I'm going to tell you something else that I was thinking about this week. You also have the skill. Let me say that again. You have the skill. Everybody that's in this room has the skill. All you need to know is what the tools are to get the job done. The tools are Jesus. That's right. Absolutely. You all have it. I'm going to to continue to say this. You all have the power to overcome sin, death, and the grave. Why? Because Jesus gave us that power. Absolutely. If we apply it, if we actually apply what God has said that we can do, we can raise the dead. We can overcome death. Right. We can do greater and bigger things than what God has already done. Isn't that what He just said? Yes. Then why don't we do that? We We're scared. We don't believe. We don't have enough faith. That's right. We don't have time. We don't have the time. Yeah. My sister called me up this week, and she says, "I'm believing that Deanna is going to be healed." Yeah. Praise Amen. God. Amen. My sister called me up this week. And she says, I believe that God can heal without even going to a doctor. Amen. That's right. That's right. He can. That's right. My sister called me up this week and said, I believe that God can heal her without even going to the doctor. And I'm standing on that God's going to heal her. I got another call from somebody else who said, well, you still got to go to the doctor. Doesn't matter. We've all said that, right? So, and then my mom, I'm like, yeah, there I just said, thanks, I got my mom in trouble now. I'm in trouble. Bye, mom. I love you. I'm in trouble. So then my mom says, I believe that God can heal, but I still believe we have to go to the doctor. And I said, well, what's the difference? And I want you to think about this just for a moment. I was not going to share this. Somebody who takes 25 pills a day or somebody who doesn't take any pills, if we really believe that God can heal us and take care of us, then we should have the ability and the strength to believe that God can do all things. That's right. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Now, I'm not telling you, don't, don't, if you're the first time here, I'm not telling you not to go to the doctor. And I'm not telling you to stop taking all you your pills. That's right. not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. We should have the balance in our life to know when it's time to go to the doctor. We should have the balance in our life to know when we need to trust in God. And we don't do that. We don't do that. You know what we do? We worry and worry and worry and worry and worry and worry and stress and stress and stress and stress and and think and think and think and think and then we worry some more because we're thinking and then we're going and we're just on this this roller coaster of emotion. This roller coaster of lies being told us. This roller coaster of what the enemy feeds us. And then after he feeds us and tells us, go do it, go do it, go do it. Then after we do it, guess the one we do. You know what we do? Oh, that was me. Why did I do that? Amen? I'm going to say, P. Bob, this message is exactly what I needed to hear tonight. Amen. He has the supply. All we have to do is We have the skills, right? Do you have the skills? Yes. Do you have the skills, Daniel? Yep. Debbie, you got the skills? Yes. Keith, you got the skills? Yes. If I don't, my God does, and all I have to do is cry out to Him and ask Him right. to give me some strength, absolutely, give me some ability. Me and Robbie have been talking a lot in the last couple of weeks of how we need to hit our knees more, and as pastors, we need to come into this church and start really praying and really seeking after God's face. We said we've opened up the church this week. I'm encouraging. I'm opening up the church next week. I'm encouraging. If you get some free time, come over. Let me know you're over here, and let's pray. Either together, or you alone. You got real quiet in here. You've got to apply in order to get something back. You've got to press in. You've got to, you've got to give it all to God. And when you do that, I guarantee He's going to reach back to you. Amen?
Amen. Amen. Even John 3.16, which says, who can quote it for me real quick? The God Go for it, my brother. The God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life. The one line says, Who's, whoever, whosoever believes, right? Whosoever. What do you have to do in order to get the whosoever? I'm the whosoever, but I still have to apply it to my life. You have to believe. You've got to believe, which is what? Applying it. Yes. It's not enough just to say, I believe. You've got to start applying everything that God has for you. Yes, it is enough to say that, but you still got to apply something to get something. Right? Isn't that what we said in the beginning? Walk out your salvation. Applying it. Keep going down the same path. You can't get a job. You can't get a promotion. You can't get your taxes back. You can't get a car or a home or gifts from God unless you do what? Unless you apply something to get them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody tell me we're on the right page. We're on the right, right page. page. Hey. I'm okay. Are we going one more, right? Gentle. Gentle. Ready? Gentle. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you go, Bob. You'll never die again, will you? Never, never. <laughs> Romans 12, 6 through 8, New Living Translation. Huh? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Just act like you're paying attention for a second. Romans 12, 6 through 8. Nick. <laughs> All right. Can you that again? In His grace. God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prop, 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 speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is Giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, right? We don't need a bottle any explanation for that one? No. no. How many have a gift in this house? It's all the same. If you, go, you guys don't have gifts? Or, or you weren't paying attention? Let's try it again. I won't even look over there. We'll just see it. Maybe I will. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. How many have a gift in this house? Do we need to move you out? No, I want you to look at you. You ready? Do you have a gift in this house? You got a gift? Yeah. Well, then raise your hand! No. I don't have a hand to raise both hands. All right. So we all have gifts in this house, right? Amen. Amen. We all got gifts. Let's raise our hands if you got gifts. I'm not even going to look over there. He's mean to me. <laughs> if you've got a gift in this house, it means you're supposed to do everything and do it diligently. You're supposed to do it with skill. You're supposed to do it without questioning it. You're supposed to go for it all. If you've got a gift of teaching, then teach. If you've got a gift of encouraging one another, then do it. If you've got a gift of prayer, then you better start praying. If you've got a gift of preaching, you better start preaching. If you've got a gift of hospitality, you better start hospitalizing somebody. <laughs> gifts are, but everybody has a testimony. Everybody's got a testimony. I have a what? testimony. You got can a testimony for me right now? Yeah. But you got to come up here and hit the apply button before you can give it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The funny thing is it's his box anyway. <laughs> oh. oh, you heard it. Nice to meet you, man. I'm Bob. I met you a year and a half ago. Oh, you did? Yes, you did. That's right. Okay. 
<laughs> um, my testimony is, um, man, I went to jail a couple summers ago, and I was there for 11 months. Then I went to CTF for six months. I got out. Well, I got out after four months. Then I had to go back because I got in a fight with a roommate. That's dumb. Then I got out. And then I had to go back because I quit taking all my medication and my judge said I couldn't do that. So then I had to go back for 60 days and then I got out. But when I was in jail, I got baptized. In Jesus name. And Amen. My life changed. I started having victory over the sin. And I went to court today. I was just going to pay $5 on the fine because I'm poor. But actually, I'm prospering. I have a job. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But I went to court today and I told the judge, like, I, I ride my bike to work five miles every day and my job is <coughs> me out on airport highway to 13 miles away and I need to get my license and I have a warrant block. Can I please rescind my fines or else just lift the warrant block or let me do community service? And he looked through every, he looked through six different cases that I had. I got arrested eight times two summers ago. That's oh. the stuff I really know. But he went through all six cases and he said, Oh, well, you serve 90 days consecutive, 60 days consecutive, time served, court costs and fines, paid for. I paid $15 to get my reinstatement fee today. $567 were wiped out.
like I said, I'm not going to ask you to do anything weird or out of the ordinary. Here's all I'm going to do. It's you and God right now. And all I'm going to say to you is, is there more that you need to apply in your life? Is there more times that you need to hit the apply button with God? Either getting yourself into prayer, or getting into your word, or learning who God is. And if that's you tonight, and you're having a struggle, and you're not, have, you're, not a, you're not allowing yourself to hit the apply button, could you just raise your hand for me tonight? Amen. So Lord God, I'm just going to pray right now. Lord Jesus, I ask you to touch every person that underneath the sound of my voice that's got their hand up. That Lord God, you would just touch them and give them the ability to apply more of you into their life. Lord Jesus, whether that would just be prayer, whether that would just be seeking after you more, whether that would be getting into their word more, Lord God. Lord God, that they would be able to find out their gifts and be able to use them, Lord God, for your glory. Lord Jesus, I ask that you just continue to touch us, Lord Jesus. And I thank you that you give us the ability to apply, Lord Jesus. You never turn us down and you never tell us that we're not going to be hired. All you say is that we reach out and you'll reach in. So Lord God, if there's somebody underneath the sound of my voice that doesn't even know who you are tonight, Lord God, I would ask, Lord Jesus, that they would just ask you to come into their heart. We love you tonight, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your spirit. I ask, Lord God, you give them direction in the Holy Spirit tonight, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit would just die, Lord Jesus, because that's what you do. So, Lord God, I would ask you to just continue to touch us, Lord God, as a church, and touch your people underneath the sound of my voice. We love you tonight, Lord Jesus. We give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Got good? Yeah. All the time. All the time. All the time. Daniel's back. I'm glad to see him. Bravo. Ain't moving. Ain't flying 
they said, but God, if you if you got to make God come, have you ever been in a situation you just tired? Yeah. You tired of staying? I I I I I I I I I I with my son. I deal with my daughter. I deal with my neighbors. And I, and I deal with sin. I'm just tired. And sometimes you got to get on your knees and pray for yourself. Sometimes you got to make up. How can I pray for you and myself ain't right? How can I get delivered for my son and my, myself ain't right? Sometimes you got to get on your knees in your own secret closet. And, get, and make God come to you. You 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 can come with a good speech. The band can play good without God's spirit. But when God's spirit is in you, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Amen. I I ain't perfect. I'll be out there too doing the same thing. But hey, I got to I got to get one of my things past that here, down here. I got to go home by myself. I got to pray. I got to get I got to ask God for forgiveness. Time after time. I I I have to I I I'm not per I'm not it's not like my life is like Superman. <laughs> I ain't got no problem. I got problems. But I know God is able. I know the Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? How can you hear without the preacher? When you get this, you can renew your mind and apply yourself. You got to want to apply. You got to want to do what's right. You got to want to live what's right. Sometimes when you round negative, you don't want to be round. Sometimes when folks drinking and smoking, and you have been there, you have done everything you grown up to do. But sometimes when you get with some decent, and when God uh, 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 elevate in your spirit, elevate in your mind, elevate in your your life, you don't want nothing negative around you. You want cleanness. When you at work, you 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 don't want no confusion. You want to go home in peace. Every time we be here, we should get together and pray. Pray for ourselves. When we got God's spirit, I can ever, I can, I can do, I can treat my sister right. I can treat my brother right. Then I can be able to relate to my brother about praying for another brother. When my life is in the shining, I can't help you, brother, to pray and lift a sister up when she needs to be prayed. Because my life is all messed up. My life is not in prayer. But when I get down and pray and, and get on bending knees daily and kill flesh, I better help pastor. I better help the, the, the prayer partners. But you can't do it unless you get yourself together. Amen. Amen. And when you get yourself together, God, he reward you. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to live what's right? How bad do you want to, to be a help instead of a hindrance? You can be, your, your tongue to be the worst nightmare of a person. You can say the wrong thing and make a person mean. But if you got God's spirit and help you to Honey, everything's all right. <laughs> well, no matter what goes on, you can make it if right. you got God's yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. have the spotlight on you. What I make wrong say, God bless me to be in this church. God bless me with a, 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 a handsome, beautiful pastor. <laughs> <laughs> seed in this church. I come to plant, I come to live in this city. In a few months or a month. But I come to be a help, not a hindrance. I want God to elevate my spirit. I, I, I bless the sister who sang the song. I bless the, 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 the praise team and, and the people praise God. But I feel like this. 
any one of y'all go through trials mm -hmm. and the tribulations, pray where you're at. Amen. If you in the shelter, are you in the streets, are you going through trials, and you having a family that's beginning, get on your knees and pray daily and strive to come to the Things ain't going to be easy. Sometimes you got to carry your own cross, baby. Sometimes you got to go through persecution and life and but but when we when the church doors open and when the band is playing, get your shouting shoes on. This ain't no play game.